Okay, well, what's going on today, YouTube? We're going to tear a Net Atmo weather station device apart. We do have the indoor and outdoor modules uh, to take apart today. First thing I'm going to do is unplug it and start with the outdoor module first because it is the easiest to get halfway into because they've made it uh, simple enough. You can literally twist it off, pull it apart, and take the two screws off the top here to pull the batteries out of. After we take those two screws off the top, easy enough, dump the batteries out, and then there are two screws that allow us to get into the rest of the device. Taking my handy dandy hex driver, uh, lets us pull these two screws out of here, easy enough, and then the device splits apart for the board to come out. There is this really nice rubber gasket around the board that only lets one corner of the board see the open atmosphere and that one corner has the chip on it for the temperature, humidity, and I don't think the outdoor unit does sound, so I would imagine it's just temperature and humidity. Now we've got the indoor device here which is much bigger uh, and has no screws visible, but I notice that if you take the top and spin it, or the bottom rather, and spin it off, it uh, comes undone and exposing three screws. So we'll take those three screws out. And I don't even think it's the same size hex, so you're going to need a flathead screwdriver that fits or grab the right hex that fits to take those three screws out. Once those three screws are removed, you can see that the device is exposed with some antennas and it just pushes through to the other side, comes out. It's a nice metal shield there, similar to Apple products that houses their stuff in that brushed aluminum finish. Uh, the LED diffuser lens just fell right off there, so that pay attention when you put it back together that that lines up with the groove on the front of the NetAtmo device to show the LED status of the device itself. Now there's a couple more screws that hold this together, but first I want to make a note that NetAtmo did actually have plans to put batteries in this module, as you can see, but there are no tabs. So it's just a board that plugs into USB, but it looked like at some point somebody had revisions to put AA batteries in there. So I'm going to use another flathead screwdriver to take these hexes apart because I don't have many hexes available with my nice handle. Uh, but again, a tiny flathead screwdriver is just a, a nice handy thing that get by with screws that aren't super tight. And it works just well. After you pull the cover off with a few screws, the, uh, the diffuser for the LEDs pops off, the much bigger diffuser. There are only two RGB LEDs. Again, more plastic on the other side. It exposes the board completely, showing us a really large CO sensor. Uh, that's a carbon monoxide sensor. Uh, it also has two antennas on top, one for Bluetooth, the other is for Wi-Fi. And the touch tab on top there is a capacitance touch sensor to uh, do a manual measurement when needed. There are a lot of electronics on this board with plenty of sensors for almost any situation, including the STM32F103 ARM processor. And again on the back is a close-up of the CO sensor. The little board for outside also has an STM32 processor on it, as well as the humidity and temperature. On the back side, we've got some damage. Here's a close-up of the STM32 chip that's on the little board for outdoors. You can see the long coiled up antenna for the communication back to the main base, as well as the close-up of that chip that's exposed to the outdoor environment for temperature and humidity. This board also has an LED on it to allow the user to know that they've put the batteries in the right way and that it is pairing up with the main base. There is a sensor with a hole in it here on board that is the MEMS microphone for indoor audio measurements. If you notice a little further up, we do have the chip on board here that is identical to the one outdoors for the temperature and humidity. Going a little further up, there is some memory on board to store data measurements, also an RGB LED controller, and the support for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. 
so that the main base station can pair up with the small device and the base station can also pair up on Wi-Fi networks. There's a lot of test points followed by that STM controller there, which is the STM132F103. And further down on the board, there's just a lot of open space followed by that touch sensor. And if we plug it in, the unit powers up, starts seeking for Wi-Fi. It initiates the smaller unit. There you can see with the Bluetooth pairing up to the smaller unit. And once it gets its data from the smaller unit, it will actually pair up on the wireless internet and post its data results to wonderground.com. That is where I used to have this one set up. And then if you touch the top sensor there, it will give you a measurement on demand. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Yeah.